yeah, thanks for coming. Oh, pleasure. Um, okay, let's start. The piece is called Some Formal Aspects of the Letter Form B. And um, the first thing I have to do is a bit of theatrical thing I'm not quite sure with, but uh, I do it anyway. Um, I'll get down on the floor. Like that. And I'm going to draw a semicircle using the radius of my arm. Like that. I'll get up. Sit up. So, and I tell a story. In the beginning, there was chaos. Out of the chaos, that arose a hill. And this hill is called Ben Ben. That's an old um, Egyptian myth of origin. Um, so I'll stand up. On top of the hill, um, Atom appears, the first god. And I thought it's perhaps interesting to start with um, this image, because um, it's quite weird since the alphabet starts with alpha and beta, alphabet, whereas here we have ben ben and then atom, so it's a strange reversal. Um, it's, it's a bit like um, bet alpha instead of alphabet. The thing here is uh, that this reversal already indicates um, the very intimate relation between the history of writing and the history of the alphabet and uh, the history of patriarchy. So that's kind of an um, introduction. The first aspect of the letter form B is um, related to the a closed shape, which the letter B is. And um, I might just draw a closed shape, like maybe over here. So. Well, it's interesting, I think, that the closed shape is primarily a feeling. So we have a, um, a feeling here. So, and that's maybe the, the, the point where we need the first slide. I don't know if somebody could like, just uh, turn on the projector. No. <laughs> We need another slide, yeah. And another one. And another one. Right. Okay. That's a bit confusing because uh, now you know the images already I'm using in the performance, which doesn't matter. So these are uh, shapes introduced by uh, the Swiss psychiatrist Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget um, asked children, like the age of three and a half and four, to uh, reproduce shapes um, like this ones. And what, what's quite interesting that they, the children, before they can actually draw like triangles or um, um, circles or um, squares, they're able to reproduce or to mark the difference between inside an object, outside an object. So um, I think that's quite remarkable. This is the Stadium 1B, he calls it. The Stadium 1E, uh, 1, 1A is related to uh, the first scribbling of a child, 
on the intentional and then uh, not intentional and then intentional. So um, what we have here is, of course, like a consciousness about inside and outside. And I want to push this a bit further um, by using this. Um, it's kind of progress we make. history of mankind, uh, progress in civilization. So what we have here is the uh, an hieroglyph, which is actually the sign for house. It's important because this is kind of the forerunner for the um, second alphabet in the Hebrew alphabet, bet, which also means house. And. Um, also, here we can play this game of like outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, and so on. So we all also have a, um, the possibility to walk on the lines, you know, to tick some boxes, and um, we can also think of this as kind of a parental situation um, where somebody inside says, oh, come in, food is ready, and the child says like, okay, nice. Or uh, the situation of, oh, come on, come to bed, you're tired. And you're like, yeah, you're probably right. And this situation is um, also related to another hieroglyph I can add to this one. If I drop draw a sign like this, it means to come out. And coming out is, of course, related to um, the idea of giving birth to, or also, like today, um, of coming out of the um, carpet, of the carpet, of 
What's this called again? The close-up, thank you. Um, right. This a sign when you, when you single it out as a hieroglyph means to flee, to escape. And um, the interesting thing, uh, the name for this sign is Ben. So if I add it here, like on top of it, uh, you see Ben Ben, and it makes sense. So I'll go back to the house. I'll take my shoes off. And um, this is actually the end of part one. I want to do now like a small, like a short excursus. Um, and it's about the city of Arles. The city of Arles um, has an amphitheater, um, as maybe some of you know, and um, built by the Romans, of course. Um, and it was, yeah, you know, they, they built this amphitheater, and the city w was growing, and um, things were developing. And during the Middle Ages, a new situation occurred. The, um, there, there were lots of tribes like looting around and threatening the city. So what happened? The people dismantled the houses outside uh, in, in the city and rebuilt the houses in the amphitheater to kind of protect and um, this situation, uh, yeah, you know, like a, like a castle or uh, what you call in German, Burg. And um, this situation lasted until um, the beginning of the 19th, 19th century and after the French discovered their glorious past, the Roman Empire, um, they started to uh, dismantle uh, the, the structures inside the amphitheater and uh, brought it back to, to the old, uh, yeah, or it simply like showed the, the, um, the old situation. Now, um, what, what happened is that only like three or four images of this situation survived. Um, and this over there is one of them. Good, end of excursus, um, start of part two. Part two is actually related to um, what Alfred Kallier probably would call the bispheric semantics. So it's related to the letter form, both in the sense of the sound of the letter and the shape of the letter. And um, when we think again about this uh, structure here, the ground plan of the house. We have a pass pro toto, which means uh, the ground plan uh, serves as a part for the whole. Now we have a, so, so it's actually about the, the actual house, about the building. The interesting thing is that we now not, are not talking about the closed shape anymore, but about a closed volume. So the house is a closed volume. And what, it, what is interesting, if you think about words describing volumes in the English language, you'll find a lot of words starting with the letter B. So that is, of course, the, um, if we start from the bottom, the, um, the, the word bed, I mean, the, the connection between bed and bed and house, I already explained. So this is kind of the, the first thing like that. 
And then, of course, we have the connection of, um, to, to belly and breast, right? And um, then it's about balance. A, a very important aspect of the letter form B is balance. So we have a, a duality of the letter. And um, this, of course, is also related to, um, to words like, I mean, it's also reflected in the, in the situation of the, the um, B as the second let letter of the alphabet. So, as in two, like two with two O. And um, then we can think of words, for example, like uh, bilateral or bipartisan or bisexual or by um, uh, bipolar, for example, or bilabial. And um, the word bilabial is indeed quite interesting because it is about um, the lips. It's a linguistic term, all the sounds the lips produce. And of course, um, it contain, it, it's about the two lips, and, uh, as in uh, bachi or uh, busi or busel. Yeah, and um, so this brings me to the to the features of, features of the body, which kind of um, and the bilateral organization of the body, um, as in um, breasts or balls or butt, and uh, also about the body in general, like the balance of the body, for example, as in the ballerina, and. Um, but coming back to, to the bilabial part, it is about a, a baby language as well. If you think about um, the baby coming out of the belly, starting to bubble, right? Like this, uh, like ba, 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 ba. Yeah? And um, after it learned all the vowels, it's like ba, 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 bo, 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 bo. Ba 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 ba, ba 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 ba, bi 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 bi, ba 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 ba, ba 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 ba, bu 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 bu, ba 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 ba. Right, pretty simple. Um, that's actually the end of part two. So part three is actually about art history and male subjectivity. Um, and I need the first slide, which is the slide with, just try it, doesn't matter. Uh, the other one. Nice, thank you. Um, this is a drawing by Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, and it's, it's part of a, uh, a series called Parole in Libertà. And um, Parole in Libertà aims at a new way of writing poems, which is like to free the letter uh, from the typographical regime and, and trying to um, organize in a different way, which here means to, to uh, bring back the immediacy both of the sound and of the uh, drawing. So what we see here is kind of a landscape, and it actually shows the, a battle in the Alps during the First World War. Um, so Marinetti, in a kind of pseudo heroic mimesis tries to uh, feel, experience what a soldier in the First World War experienced, so it's, that's his fantasies about that. Um, we have two groups here, I think, which is very interesting. A moment of image where you can hardly read, which is more where the, where the poem turns into an image. And you have other parts where you can actually read, 
which is zoom, zoom, for example. And um, then we have this crossed out bees, a strange contrast between the, the bees above. And um, this kind of produces a linearity uh, which makes, enables you to read as well, like b -b 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 -b, for example. And um, this contrast, I think in particular, is interesting because I think Marinetti here aims at like, the idea of the bomb. The bomb, indeed, is a very interesting particular uh, volume again. The, the bomb contains something which kind of makes it explode, uh, a tension which unfolds, and that exactly happens when we, when we actually produce a bee with our uh, mouth. So it's the, the air and the pressure of the air which is released uh, when we say boom, for example. So it's, it's quite an aggressive moment, and I ask myself, like, how are these two aspects related to each other? Like, this very cozy, almost cloud-like, maybe hilly, uh, like Berg or um, Barrow. Um, so, and I think the contrast maybe is produced through the situation that he imagined the fantasized about the, the trenches and the situation of the comrades being together in the trenches, like body to body, very close, very intimate, warm, uh, buried in, in, the, in, in the earth, and um, kind of, yeah, in mutual trust, bound together on like that. And I think it's particularly interesting in the context of uh, fascist ideology. If you think of uh, the iconogra iconography of, of fascism, there are two uh, moments which are of particular importance. One is like this uh, feature of the, uh, of the salute, the, the Roman salute and uh, there's kind of a power gesture, uh, like of the, of the fighter, it's a heroic gesture. Also, you can find it in sports or uh, like football. Uh, the, the Nazis in Germany like immediately used it again. And so this is like one, one, of, one of the important signatures of the signature gesture of, of Italian fascism. But the other one is like if you roll roll in, it's the fascists. So the, the word fascism actually comes from, from the idea of fascists, which is a bundle. So it's bound together, it's a group of men bound together. And um, this, this feeling of being bound together, I think, comes into play here. And I need the next slide, which is the, the other one. <laughs> which is this one. Um, that's an image of a performance done by Josef Beuys. Josef Beuys, um, I think, was never into this kind of menabund or brotherhood thing of being bound together. He really wanted to be a leader. And uh, um, what you can see here, his uh, performance is called Der Chef, which means the boss. And um, so he rolled himself in this kind of felt for seven hours or even more. And um, the only way he communicated was with a, um, a sender inside of this roll of felt and uh, a loudspeaker. So he's addressing the outside world via this um, uh, via this loudspeaker, you can actually see in the corner. 
So, and if we trace that back in the biography of uh, Josef Beuys, we can think of him when he was 19 years old, very eager to join the Nazi army. Uh, he really wanted to get high up, and um, so, so what he did, and that was in 1940, as a 19-year-old boy, he enrolled into the army like that, and then the rest is the story you all know already. Uh, the myth he constantly repeated, uh, he worked with in his uh, artworks, is the myth of him uh, flying with the airplane, like crashing into the Crimean steppe, and uh, injured, rescued by um, Tatars, wrapped in felt, very warm, uh, warmed, uh, fat with honey, and uh, warm with fat. So, um, this particular moment is um, related to the leader um, who comes kind of out of this role, which is the leader out of the belly, the leader to be born, right? And that actually relates to the last image we've seen very often now. Um, thank you. <laughs> and that's the image of uh, Louis Bourgeois in the West Village in New York. And she has this grandiose outfit, um, very beautiful um, costume uh, with this, yeah, it's drop-like thing with drop-like features hanging off of her body. And um, that's actually a reference, I think, a reference to a statue of an ancient Greek statue, and that's the statue of Artemis um, of Ephesus. It's the same thing, you know, like these features of uh, drop like shapes hanging off of the body. And um, it's very interesting because a lot of people actually think these shapes are uh, breasts, making her a symbol of fertility and bro uh, motherhood. So, and that's something I want to end with. That's not true. It's not, uh, these are not breasts hanging there. Uh, what's, what's hanging down of her body is actually our uh, testicles, balls, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>